All right, so the last thing we need to do here before we actually install tools and get going with code is a quick rundown of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and what they each are responsible for, what they each do, and how they work together. So these are three tools we'll spend a ton of time on in this course. Pretty much everything we do from here on out will involve at least one of these three, if most likely all three at the same time, once we learn them all. Let's begin by just understanding what they are. So those three technologies are responsible for making web pages. They're the only thing that your browser understands. They're the only three languages. They're not really all programming languages, but they, they're the only technologies that our browser expects web pages to utilize. And they each have a different responsibility. Here I have uh, a sentence, a purple dinosaur danced. It was too long to fit dinosaur. So the purple dino danced. We have three pieces if we ignore the, the article. We've got dinosaur. The what, the thing, is a dinosaur. It's the nouns here. And that's what I like to imagine as the HTML. HTML on a web page describes the what, the things on the page. Then we have purple, which is adjectives, or it's an adjective. The purple dino, it describes the dinosaur. That is what CSS does. It helps us describe HTML elements, things on the page. Make this purple, make this, uh, you know, much wider, change the font size, give it a border, give it a a shadow. And then we have the JavaScript, the verbs here, danced. The purple dinosaur danced. It's the action, the things that it's doing, the verbs. JavaScript is one we'll we'll focus on uh, in just a moment, but let's start with HTML and CSS. So here I have a web page. This is a website called CodePen. We'll learn more about it later on, uh, but all you need to know for now is that it's a a way in the browser of sharing code and of writing and tweaking code using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we have three windows. These are the three technologies, and then this is the end result. So we have a calculator down here, so I can do some simple math. 98 times 6 equals 588. Okay. So if I get rid of the JavaScript and I get rid of the CSS and we just focus on the HTML, let's do that to start. So I'm just going to get rid of them here. You'll see that we have the underlying things on the page. We have buttons. They're very ugly and they don't do anything. So the formatting, very different. The action, the the interaction is non-existent. But the what of the page, the nouns are all here. That is HTML the stuff, the content. So we've got buttons, we've got some text, we've got a clear button, we've got the display. Right now it just says zero. We have a reset button. Now if I add my CSS back in, it's going to look radically different. The same content, now totally spaced differently, colored differently, uh, different fonts, background colors, you've got a gradient, so everything's centered. This is now orangish different font sizes, so lots and lots of changes. I mean, the layout now, we've got a a grid going on, uh, but the calculator doesn't actually work. So I can click on a button, but nothing is actually being added together. We can't do any math. I can't reset. Where even is the reset button? Nothing happens. Now, if I add in the JavaScript, this is the action, the verbs. So we have HTML, the stuff on the page, the what. It's ugly, but the content is there. Then we have CSS, which describes that content. So take each button and make it a square and give it this background color and give it this font size and this font color. All that stuff is CSS. JavaScript is the action. I'll add that back in. It doesn't look like much changes, but as I click now, you'll see the display updates and I can actually do math. 985 plus 2 equals 987 divided by 3 equals 329. Really? It evenly divided by three. Let's see. Let's divide by, I don't know, seven. Anyway, uh, we can clear. We actually have interactions in here. We are doing things. It's not just looking pretty, but it actually does something. Now, JavaScript does a lot more than just, uh, you know, adding numbers together or multiplying them and displaying them here. JavaScript is responsible for Anytime you have uh, a live notification pop up or uh, any sort of chat, uh, any sort of autocomplete and search, and there's so many features that JavaScript is responsible for. If you ever have played a game in the browser, Sudoku or a crossword or uh, really anything, 2048, those are all built with JavaScript as well as HTML and CSS. So to recap, HTML, it's the what of the page. It's the content, even if it's hideous. 
It's the underlying structure. CSS describes that structure and how it should look, and basically that's that's it. It doesn't really do anything uh, other than making it look good, but that's obviously very important. And then we have JavaScript, which does a lot. Here, it's kind of limited. It's just adding logic for a calculator, but it's building the actual logic, the action, the verbs of the web page. Those three tools work together and we'll be learning them so that we can use them together in the rest of the course. So we've got to begin with HTML, but before we can do that, we need to set up our environment. So that's next.